Minitech Open Lock. Depending on the construction of the safe or vault, it may be necessary to open secondary locks such as key locks first before opening the Minitech. It's as simple as press any key to wake the display, enter a valid ID followed by the six digit code, wait for the signal to open and then turn the safe handle or in the case of a deadbolt, turn the knob. The signal to open is the display showing the message open and the LED will be illuminated green. As soon as the Minitech displays the signal to open, there's about three seconds, depending on the bolt type, in which to turn the safe handle or turn the knob. The rest of this video is demonstrations of opening with different bolt types, because depending on the bolt type, the amount of time that passes between entering the end of the code and being able to actually open the lock is quite different. So here we have a swing bolt, and with these basic bolt works, we can see the interaction of the bolt works with the lock's bolt head. You can see here that there's a little play in the handle and that's normally the case with the swing bolt and we'll see why in just a moment. So under normal circumstances, we would wake the display, enter a valid ID and code, wait for the signal to open, then turn the safe handle. It's quite important with swing bolt locks to ensure that you wait for the signal to open. And this is true of Minitech and any other safe lock. So where you have a swing bolt lock installed, you must wait for the signal before an attempt to turn the handle is made. Here's what happens if you try to turn the handle too early or if the handle is not in the fully closed position. So you can see there, there's a gap between the bolt works and the bolt head. If we start wiggling the handle, you can see how it pushes against the swing bolt. So if we try to enter a code and don't wait for the signal to open, it can cause problems. Press any key to wake the display. Enter a valid ID and code. You see there that I've tried to turn the handle too quickly and it's not letting me open the bolt. And now we've lost the window in which to open the bolt. So let's do it the right way. The handle is in the fully closed position and there's plenty of space, there's no pressure in the wrong direction. There's plenty of space there, so let's enter a code. There's the signal to open, and we can turn the handle. So here we have a motor bolt lock, and with these basic bolt works, we can see the mechanical interaction between the bolt works and the bolt head of the safe lock. Motor bolts have an internal motor which retracts the bolt. It then allows for the bolt works to freely pass where the bolt had occupied space. So let's have a look. Press any key to wake the display, enter a valid ID and code, and wait for the signal to open. You can see there that that took quite a bit longer than with the swing bolt. So now I can freely turn the handle. Motor bolts normally drive to close after eight seconds, but the bolt head is sprung loaded. And so when the bolt works are released, it springs closed into the locked position and the keypad will indicate that the bolt is fully closed. As with swing bolts, it's very important to wait for the signal to open. In the case of a motor bolt, that takes a little bit longer, but it is very important. We'll see what happens now if you attempt to turn the handle before the bolt has fully retracted. So if I try and turn that handle, you can see that it's putting pressure on that bolt and it's only half retracted. A quick note on bolt force. Techno Securex's motor bolt has a 30 Newton bolt force, which makes it one of the strongest class two motor bolts available in the market. It can pull heavy safe parts and relocker mechanisms. 30 Newtons equates to being able to pull around three kilos. So it begs the question, how can the movement of the handle impact on the bolt so much? In very simple terms, because we're not physicists, it's something to do with Newton's third law of motion and mechanical advantage. The small force exerted by a hand turning a handle is amplified into a much greater force against the bolt because of the lever and wheel. 
Along with the friction of metal creating resistance against the bolt head, the combined forces are greater than the force of the bolt. So let's do it the right way. Make sure that that handle is in the fully closed position and there's no pressure on the bolt head. If I press any key to wake the display, enter a valid ID and code, it retracts the bolt and we can then safely turn the handle. Finally, we have a deadbolt lock, also known as a direct drive lock. Once we enter the code and we have the signal to open, we turn a knob to retract the locked bolt. Please see the motor bolt video to see the interaction of the bolt head with the bolt works of the safe. Press any key to wake the display, enter a valid ID and code, wait for the signal to open and turn the knob. It should now be possible to turn the handle of the safe which allows the bolt works to pass through the space that was previously occupied by the bolt head. To secure the safe, turn the safe handle, then turn the knob. Test that the deadbolt lock is secure. As with the swing bolt and motor bolt, if an attempt is made, to turn the knob before the keypad has signalled that it's okay to open, problems can arise. I'll try to demonstrate that now. You can see there that I tried to turn it and it's not letting me do it because there is force against the mechanical components inside the lock. So ensure that the knob is in the fully closed position and enter the code again, but this time wait for the signal to open.